From the... I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the... I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just £2 a ticket. No purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see mckinneycompetitions.com. Nobody has to pay a hire or usage. Um, and therefore the communities to, to use and at any at any time. So if a group of mates want to go and play headers and volleys or five and eight football or um, a game of tennis, all they have to do is just turn up and they can just play with their friends and that's really the sort of ethos. Six or seven might be into playing the football and two or three might, might prefer the game of bus and it means that we're not sort of alienating anybody, everybody can be engaged. Basically, I'm looking at it to be a first step in the ladder. So if there's girls out there that have been watching the World Cup and the women's game that's been highly profiled and they're thinking that maybe like the tribe, but they don't want to commit yet to a club, this would be a perfect opportunity for those girls to, to participate in the game. Honestly, I can't um, stress enough the young people for, you know, looking towards their career goals and, you know, moving to university of how much of a benefit but um, doing these different week courses and getting extra. Would they have like actual credits for them? Yeah. yeah. Those are the voices of Alex Clifford, Community Sport Development Officer, and Aaron McNeil, Multi Sports Coach from ABC Council. This is your host, Elaine Ingram, and for this week's podcast, I spoke to Alex and Aaron about all of the fantastic programs that they have coming up around the area. There really are so many things to cater to all age groups and all sorts of sports and even some non-sporting activities and things like um, walking football, which is um, something that I'd never heard of, but is um, a very interesting concept. So let's hear more from Alex and Aaron. I'm here with Alex Clifford. I'm back here in the South Lake Leisure Centre, which I was here recently, if any of our listeners will know. I was up here talking to Tommy Stevenson and I just spotted him outside there. Um, But I'm um, Alex, is you're the Community Sports Development Officer. And um, I, I can't believe, it just took me ages to find parking here. I cannot believe that this place is just so jam-packed it really is like the hub of the community up here yeah it is um the centers since it's been opened has been right in the middle of the community and we're trying to just get more of the community involved and participating in physical activity and and coming into the center and making use of the great facilities both in inside and outside um obviously the locations they deal with all the cycle paths and the walkways i uh, um around the centre and the surrounding area and then in the centre itself we've got fantastic facilities from the gym to the pools um, with the indoor facilities, the big halls and stuff as well so it gives us a very um, good opportunity to do diverse range of activities to, to suit hopefully um, touch wood everybody's needs um, within the community so then there's something here for everybody to to get active and and to get out and get moving so and you um, can see when you're even if you are taking a walk around the lake here you can see in the windows all the big glass windows all around you can see everybody on their exercise bikes and everything so my yeah. that might be a bit of an incentive as well well that's it it, it gives hopefully everybody a wee bit of inspiration a wee bit of motivation to, to to get up and to be active and to get involved um with within the the programs and stuff yeah. and the the big thing you know within Within sport and physical activity and a lot of the stuff that we would deliver within council um, across all departments is it's, you know, it's always, there's always opportunities to make a start today. It's, it's never, you know, too late to to get out and to start and to make a start. You don't have to wait till Monday. You don't have to wait till the first Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I got, <laughs> my, my usual thing is I'll start on Monday. I suppose that's the same with everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and then Monday. And if you don't do it on the Monday, then you say, oh, I'd better wait till next week, which is stupid because you really could just do it on Tuesday, couldn't you? Yeah, well, that's it. And, and there's plenty of opportunities for everyone to make a start today. It's, it's not too late. Yeah. Well, what is your role exactly now as community sport development officer? Yeah, so within my role um, in, in, as community sport development officer is to deliver our community sport programs. Um, 
not just here in Craigavon. And this but is for the, through the council? Through the council. Um, and it's not just here in Craigavon. Um, I, I would run and deliver programmes along with my colleagues, um, Roisin, Clare and Adele, right across the borough. So we deliver programmes from Rough Island to Dromore to Middletown to Katy, um, uh, Armagh, Craigavon, Lurgan, Portadown. Right the right the way across the borough. So and that would be in leisure centres mainly. M- mainly in some leisure facilities, but quite a lot of our stuff is out and about in the heart of the communities. So um, we would have within the community sport program, I always try and say it, it's like an informal sort of approach, but I would always say that we try to take the communities and participants and individuals on a bit of a journey. Yeah. Um, through participation. So it would start right at the very beginning with our community engagement program, which is also more commonly known as our MUGA sports programs. Yeah, I was going so, to ask you, what is that acronym? Yeah, so MUGAs is short for multi-use games areas. Okay. So across the borough, we have um, about 26 um, multi-use games areas. And basically what these are, they're small um, courts, which can be which have basketball hoops like a football goal they have lane markings for tennis and for volleyball and so so many activities so on these multi-use games areas they're classed as a play facility so they're just like our play parks nobody has to pay for them nobody has to pay hire or usage um, and they're for the communities to, to use and at any at any time so if a group of mates want to go and play headers and volleys or five side football or um, a game of tennis or or volleyball or basketball. All I have to do is just turn up and they can just play with their friends and that's really the sort of ethos of... Well, that's brilliant because I know when I was growing up there was a tennis court up behind me. Now, I think it was privately owned by some organisation or other, but if we were ever up there playing football across the tennis court, we would have been chased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a much more, much better approach that kids, once you're doing something it isn't yeah. you don't have to be following the the rules of that specific sport because i mean what harm are you doing if you're if you're bouncing a football across a tennis court what difference does um, it make I, really? I, absolutely and and for me growing up it, it would have been always playing football in the square or in the state and then it, every time a football hit somebody's car or into somebody's garden then you, you're always yeah off we were looking we had a green we used to play rounders yeah. a lot but uh, so um these here um spaces they're, they're situated right in the heart of most communities and hopefully it's for communities to make make really good use of them. And what we try and do is we try and complement that there by sending sports coaches out uh, through our funded programmes to do um, sport and physical activity sessions. Um, one of the co- concepts of it are, one of the things that's misconceived about it is that the, the activities that we deliver are just for kids you know, and yeah. young children, whereas they're open to the full community. So what we do is we ask the community reps and the participants and the parents and the people who live within each area, what would you like to see happen within, you know, this facility in terms of coach delivery? And then we try to facilitate that. We use sport as it's a, it's a tool to engage with the community. So yes, we're doing sport and we're doing physical activity, but the big player for us and for a council and for key stakeholders and working with other stakeholders like public health agency or else um, PSNA or police communities safety partnership is is to build relationships and positive relationships within our communities to find out what their wider needs may be. And obviously if we can gather people together and to be more social and to be more active sort of tick two boxes are with the one stroke of the pen is that enables us to generate more conversations and build relationships which might help the wet solve and wider community problems that might be ongoing that has nothing to do with council or you know um other organizations but it, it might um, just spark conversations and give a wee bit more learning and a wee bit more assistance so that's that's really where, where we see the MUGA sports program and our community engagement program is to deliver um, sport and physical activity right on the doorstep of as many communities as we can to, do you find, to engage with them. Yeah, sorry. Do you find, is there, is there ever, 
Do you have any issues with vandalism or anything like that? Because you know a lot of times you see these sort of areas go up in in, in some communities and, you know, they, you know there's, there's always a bad element somewhere and, you know, vandalism. I know, I, you know, I live close to a park and it's been vandalised quite a number of times and, um, you know, over the years it doesn't happen very often, you know, but it does happen occasionally. Yeah, it, it does happen and, and that's that's the unfortunate side of different things. It's it's like the old saying, you've always got, you know, one or two spoilers for the majority. Um, but what we try and do is we, we try to further use the types of the MUGA program to springboard into other types of programs, likes of youth leadership or else our diversionary sports program, which we really try to engage with those um, participants who might be a little bit harder to reach yeah. to give them a little bit of a different take on the facilities and try to encourage um, those individuals to take a little bit more ownership and, and realise that this is actually for yeah. them and you know absolutely absolutely and and if they're able to take a little bit of ownership within it then obviously they're they're not going to do it as much damage or whatever but also they might understand hold on like there's all of these other people and our wider community who I live next door to all use us facilities as well yeah. whether it's a play park whether it's a mugga or um, any of the other um, areas uh, and hopefully if, if we can help educate um, the wider community within all of that there hopefully it will sort of help for a more um, cohesive living li- living space and living together and bringing people together and doing diff- different activities and uh, just using sp- the power of sport to do all of that. There's one thing I wanted to ask you about now I know this isn't relative to your borough your council um, um, because it's in it's based in Uri, um, but it's just a question I was wondering about. There's there's been an awful lot of um, calls for a skateboarding park in, yeah. in the city in Uri City, and there is none. And they've been this has been ongoing for many many years. It's been promised, and then there's been talk about uh, oh, this, you know insurance and all and, and all sorts of things that have been holding it up and holding it back. Now I know that they're. They're talking about now in the Albert Basin Park, which is going ahead, that they are talking about maybe putting in a skateboard park. But I think this is something that young people would just love. What facilities do you have around in your in your borough? Do you have anything? Yeah, so we have a skate park in um, Solitude Park in, yeah. in Bombridge, um, which is just like the Mugga facilities and the player parks, which is open. It's free of charge. Participants can just go and, and use it. We also have a pump track for BMXs here at Craig Avon Lakes, um, which again is just open to the public and when participants are out cycling their bike, um, they can just go to the pump track and give it a go and, and a bit of a tray. It's it's something that's a growing area and it's one of the things that we sort of pride ourselves within the Sport and Community Project where we don't really try to just stick to the mainstream sports and activities. And you're listening to what the young people yeah. want, you know? Absolutely. And, and it's and as challenging as it is if we can try and deliver more and more of those types of programs like um the peace for program was brilliant for us because it gave us um a little bit more resource to deliver more of these activities across the wider scope of the area so for example in the summer with um my colleagues in the peace team done the urban sports project which was skateboarding and bmxing and they done it in port of down lurgan lurgan park port down people's park and in solitude park and bomb bridge and being able to deliver those types of program, it just it widens the audience and gives everybody more and more opportunities to get involved. One of the big things is that we would always hear when we're speaking with young people is, "I'm bored" or "There's nothing to do" or yeah. whatever. So, oh, well, that's an age-old thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's always <laughs> the, the way. But what we try and do is sort of counteract that there, and if we can have more diverse opportunities, well then. All of a sudden, the aim board or there's nothing to do that that can always be rebuttaled and pushed back on, and you yeah. can say, "Well, actually, there's A, B, and C happening," and 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 that's that's what we try and do, and it's the same with our upcoming programs because obviously we spoke about the Mugger program. We'll be launching the next six weeks of it um, in February, but at the end of this month, we're also going to be doing a street soccer program on Saturday nights in Lurgan. 
So again, a lot How of How does that people, work? <laughs> so basically, they're all drop-in. Um, all of our programs within the sporting community are whether you want to start it in week two or week three or... It, or drop in or come or in and out or whatever, yeah. Out. Nobody will be turned away on, on these programs. Um, you sign up once online um, and, and then it's a drop-in process after that there. That's brilliant. Um, That's the beauty of it though, isn't it? Yeah. Because a lot of people don't want to commit to something, you know? Yeah, and, and it gives everybody a wee bit of freedom, a wee bit of flexibility and whenever participants do come in, like the, the street soccer program in which will be held in Lurgan um, using the Centre Point facility will be, it's very close to the community, it's within walking distance of some of the antisocial behaviour hotspot areas, um, yeah. it's within walking distance of that, so the, the idea is on a Saturday night when young people are saying, oh there's nothing to do or we're bored, well we have got this programme going, so, and we're hoping to add a couple of other stuff, not, yes you're coming in to do you know, street soccer, but yeah. we're hoping to have other stuff um, within that. So, stuff like a game and bus or different activities. That oh, is that just not What's a game and bus now? Explain. So, a game and bus is just it's it's a bus with um, full of different gaming consoles. So, like the so Playstations, Xboxes, stuff like that. Oh, where, I know a lot of people would that would think of that yeah, as heaven. So, <laughs> so the the idea is that it's just, like if you don't like. Um, playing football or you're not really that way inclined there's still going to be something on offer every week and you're within yeah. you're, you're with a group of people so you're yeah. not sitting in your room playing on your console yeah. you know you're actually physically with people and then you might yeah. get out and play a bit of football in between or whatever absolutely because you might have a group of friends you know and out, out of a group of ten um, six or seven might be into playing the football and two or three might, might prefer the game on bus and it means that we're not sort of alienating anybody. Everybody can be engaged. Yeah, because not everybody's. It. Yeah, not everybody's into sports. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and that's. I think that's yes, we're community sport program, but it's about engagement. Yeah. Like, for us, you use it back to using sport as a tool. Like, it's it's just not using sport. If we can use other things and other activities, that can be an engagement tool. Well, then it it meets the needs of the communities. Um, like the whole purpose of the, the diversionary program is to, to get people off the streets and engaging and, and away from and engaging in risk taking behaviours so if we can do that through um, using sport or else using a gaming bus or using stuff it's, it still meets the end result and the desired result which is, is keeping young people away from, from those risks Yeah. also we have one step further which is moving into our um, youth leadership and employability programs, which will be launched um, in the next few weeks as, as well, with programs going in in Armagh and on Craig Avenue areas. Um, and the idea of those is to try and upskill and train um, and do job training for our young people and our participants. So it's to try and engage people with um, taster sessions within a range of different sports or physical activities but also to put them through some coach education um, and basic skills that might be used not just for you know uh, coaching or a sports job but yeah. maybe stuff like child protection um, first aid which can be used and this in, all adds on onto their to you yeah. know their list of things that they can put on their CVs or put on their you know uh, bring uh, to an empl- potential uh, employer uh, absolutely stuff for a CV stuff for the the UCAS forms if any of them yeah. for university and, and, st- and stuff like that um, I, I honestly I can't um, stress enough the young people for you know looking towards their career goals and you know moving to university of how much of a benefit but um, doing these different week courses and getting extra would they have like actual credits for them yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what they'll have is they'll get their um, certificates their accreditations um, from the different uh, courses that they would do and, and they're able to put that there um, w- within their university applications or yeah. CVs, job applications and, and then through those programmes we try and encourage everybody to, to link back into their local communities and volunteering on the programmes yeah. so um, through youth leadership for example we try and make it a complete circle where yeah. if 
if young people have getting their qualifications, like any job you go for, the first question is six months experience. You know, for a young person, that's quite hard to get and, yeah. and to do. So what we try and do is circle it back. Um, and if and if there's a community engagement or a mugger program going on within they will take area, somebody in. Then hopefully they can link in with our coaches and volunteer and shadow them for a while. Yeah, it it helps them with their personal development and gaining their qualifications. But it also means that if they're applying for a job in in the future. Um, they're able to, to say, yes, well, actually, I have got six months of experience. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of people look at different jobs and job applications and they think it has to be paid experience. But it doesn't. You could be volunteering within your local club, you know. Yeah. But, like, if you're doing the social media within your local club for a year. Yeah, everything well, like that counts, of yeah, course. That, that's one year of marketing experience. Yeah. Um, if you're doing it as a coach, that's one year of coaching experience that, yeah. that you're able to put down. and. It, it doesn't and then when the employ when those people yeah as you said when those people move on and they do get a job and whatever they're doing they can link back and take some of those other people that are coming through in so that you know yeah, so, yeah so they just continue on the yeah it just becomes a, a bit of a circle yeah. and a bit of a conveyor belt you know yeah. of continuous given you know the next generation or the next lane the the same opportunities or similar opportunities and we're always trying to push it out a little bit further and a little bit better. Um, and, and that's the same with our employability program. Like we're going to be launching two employability programs in the next couple of weeks. One is going to be a, a bit shorter, intense, where everybody meets up once a week, does a range of taster sessions plus qualifications. Um, another one is going to be a little bit more relaxed and informal, um, where we'll be advertising. Um, do you want to become a pool lifeguard? Do you want yeah. to become a football coach, a Gaelic coach, a hockey coach, a you know, netball coach, whatever? Um, we're in the middle of doing a wee bit of um, engagement with a range of stakeholders to decide which sports or physical activities we'll pick. But the aim is that we'll go out there and offer those opportunities for for young young people or else um, underemployed um, people within neighbourhood junior areas. Um, who are aged from 16 to 30 so again the the whole idea is that we try and give everybody the best foot forward to have the qualifications within that They're, they'll also do their child protection first aid um, we'll also do application form writing um, interview skills training plus um, a, like a personal development plan and hopefully that'll sort of get the ball rolling for each individual to hopefully seek a career or yeah. something down the line, whether it's further education, you know, university or else SRC, or there's a whole range of different courses out there that are available uh, or else um, in some form of employment, you know, yeah. whether it's within the public sector, within council, public health agency or, you know, schools, education. There's so much out there that people yeah. don't know, young people don't know about and yeah. they're not you know how do, how do how do they find you or how do you know so we we will everything that we do will be advertised on get active abc facebook page yeah it'll also be advertised on the get active abc website so when on the website if you just um go to the get moving tab that there's basically our community um our sport in the community uh, element looking across the borough yeah your your background yourself alex you're you're involved with them, um, Arma City Football Club. How did you yeah. How did you get involved in all of this in the first place? Um, well, as as a bit fortunate, I always had a, a passion for sport and physical activity. Um, you know, from from. Are you from this area? Yeah, I'm from the uh, Portadown, Craigavon area. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, back at school, GCSE is just love PE and. Hate it being in the classroom and stuff, as okay. <laughs> some of my teachers could attest to. And and then I was quite fortunate enough. I went to SRC and Arma and done um, sport, uh, sport and exercise science. Um, and then I went to Liverpool University, 
Which um, university? Uh, John Mears. That's where my son is. is it? He, just, he just went back over yesterday. <laughs> Fantastic university. Oh, yes. Um, I don't know. He's having the crack. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, definitely good fun to be over there. Um, yeah, he's working too. I'm not going to so, give out about him. He <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. And then, no, it's just obviously over there give me so many different experiences. But I've done a degree in sports development and physical education. And then within that, I was volunteering at a couple of um, sport and community projects um, within Everton's football community project and um, Manchester United first kicks community project. And it's whenever I was doing those. Are you a Manchester United or an Everton (laughs) fan? I have to ask you that now. (laughs) Or neither. uh, Man United. (laughs) Okay. But um, what I what I sort of saw over there, it gave me a passion for the community side of things. Yeah. And I saw what wider benefits it could be. And I was just fortunate enough whenever I come back home that um, I started volunteering within the programs that I've just spoke about. So I was volunteering at Midnight Street Soccer. I was volunteering on the youth leadership So you were the proof of the pudding. You started out volunteering. Yeah. I mean, obviously you had your your background in your your degree and stuff like that. Absolutely. And then went from volunteering. I got to be on on the, the casual list within the council and the Irish Football Association. And then I started doing wee bits and pieces of coaching in schools and on the Mugger program. And then council developed the Mugger program a bit further with my old line managers, Darren Green and Michael Ruddy. They, they had developed it further and then there was an opportunity for a Mugger sports coordinator post, which was a contracted post. And I was fortunate enough that I, I, got, I got it and then... Um, it developed from being a 12-hour week contract to a 20-hour week contract. And then um, there's other opportunities to be an active communities coach, um, covering a career break for six months. And then um, the, the job I'm in at the minute came up and I was fortunate enough to, to be successful. Yeah. And I've been, been doing it now for first five years. So um, I sort of am in a way but of a product of, yeah. of the program, but there's not just myself. Like from our casual coach list at the minute, about twenty percent of the casuals delivering on the mugger program and that we're employing has come through that circle and that cycle. They've got yeah. their qualifications, they went in, they're volunteering on the programs, they tick the box for their six months experience and then they got they've been successful in a recruitment process on our casual list and and now they'll hopefully be in, in a couple of weeks' times out on the ground and Doing delivering the in their and communities. And, yeah. and for me, now line managing the programme, it's, it's a bit of a godsend because we're such a big borough. I, I can't be, yes, I have a little bit of local knowledge, but if we have coaches that have lived and grown up in the arm area delivering now in the arm area yeah they know the community better than they do exactly. you know and they know the people there and so it really is grassroots yeah absolutely grassroots and and just throughout my time with that and council i got involved in a couple of uh clubs you know coaching um from my point of view it was always very much of how how can we try and get experience to develop myself Forever and and that's after being at um, Sego, Lurgan Town, and I've ended up at Armagh City taking taking the main senior team, um, helping Shea Campbell, and um, also taking the under 13s and trying to develop the club yeah. um, a, a wee bit further from that point of view. And and like Aidan Murphy is our coaching, chairman. taking them coaching or. Yeah, so I, I would coach the men's yeah. senior team in the under thirteen still as a volunteer. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, that that side of them has never left me. I've always had a passion for sport. It's just because of working sports doesn't mean I'm gonna abandon my volunteering roots as such. Um and and just try and continue with those things. And Aidan Murphy's a big believer of getting the wider community involved. You know, within the club, and I think a lot of clubs across the world do do that really, really well. Like whether you're, whether people are living in a village or living, you know, in in towns or whatever, there's there's always a sports club. You know, in my opinion, maybe yeah. I'm a bit biased because of working in in sports development, but 
for me, there's always a sports club of some description as the heartbeat of the community, whether it's a Gaelic club, a football club, a rugby club, a, you know, a tennis club or whatever. There's always a golf club. There's always something, yeah. you know, in that community that, that you know, is used to host community engagement meetings to help, you know, with um, PCSP and community partnerships and stuff like that. So, um, like, there's so many stories I hear from clubs across the borough and their facilities being used for like launching clubs and over 50s clubs and you know netting clubs and yeah. you know there's but to me that's that, that is the heartbeat of the, the community because it just doesn't provide you know uh, their teams yeah. and their Gaelic teams or football teams or you know their, their club teams that everybody provides a, a little bit more um, that can't, can't contributes to community life and that and again it covers everybody and, and it gives everyone the opportunity to get involved and it's something that for me um, working in community sport is a big believer in you know how can we get more um, people grassroots on the ground being active and being involved in, in clubs and in groups whether that's through taking part whether it's through volunteering, whether it's through just anything, you know, any sort of assistance. Um, the clubs is always a massive help. I know from speaking to clubs, especially after COVID and stuff, it's, you know, getting volunteers and getting people to help out is always difficult and always a bit hard. So I would always encourage as many young and old people, um, older people to get involved with their local club. Um, it, it is really the the heart and soul of, of the communities across the borough. Yeah, okay. Well, that's great. Um, thanks very much for talking to me, Alex. And anybody can out, get out there now and, and find your programmes. You told us exactly how to find them and hopefully yep. you'll get a lot more people involved. Yeah. And, and everything if, goes well. Yeah, and all, all of my details are on the council council websites and, and on the Facebook posts. So... If anybody has any questions, queries, please don't hesitate to, to email me or else um, drop me a, a text or a phone call um, on the, on, I'll try my best to, to help out. Brilliant. All right. Thanks a lot, Alex. Get ready to shake up summer with the Get Active ABC Sunshine Fill Programme for kids and families. Get set for land-based adventure at our summer schemes, or why not get adventurous and maybe get wet at our Splashtastic Water Sports Summer Programme. There are so many things to do, and all we need is you. See getactiveabc.com slash summer for all the details. And now um, I'm going to speak with Aaron McNeil, and you are the um, multi sports coach involved in the program, and you do a lot of work with um, ladies football and um, things like that. So I suppose, first of all, tell us a bit about your background, Aaron. Um, well, for me, um, Bambridge, um, football and sport has always been my passion. I went across the water to university initially. You didn't go to Liverpool as well? No. Um, <laughs> uh, Alice was just telling me he went to the same university that myself. No, I actually went to Manchester, met, and then I didn't enjoy it in the first year, but seen out the first year and transferred to Central Lancashire. Okay. And from there, basically, I finished the degree and I got a job with Stoke City Council as a football development officer. And that was my first step into working in the community in terms of football programmes and setting up programmes and managing programmes and then I went to America and coached and Oh where were you in America? Um Rhode Island State. Alright. I lived in Boston for years. Was there for a little bit and then obviously took the, the job with the council and then from that I got my first step into professional football, into the Academy football at Port Vale and then went on to Forest, that's Forest and then eventually went full time then with Swansea City um, with the Academy there and then I came. Oh, this is all coaching. All coaching, yeah. But did you play? No, no. Never played. I played locally, but only really amateur. You yeah. Know, in terms of that, but it was the the degree that got the, the opened the door yeah. to get the first job in the in England in, in a football development job and being in the right place, the right time, you made connections, 
and then you've got your coaching qualifications, work on those on the side, got you into the club, and then you built on from that. And then when after I came home then, I, I applied here at Armagh, Banbridge, Craig Attenborough Council for the multi-sports role in football, and specialised in girls' football. And that it was two years past in November that I came into the post, so still quite new to the post and all the uh, circumstances of COVID. You know. Yeah, God, what a time to just yeah, yeah to get a job like that. I'm sure yeah, you were probably sitting at home a lot of the time well, we've done a lot thinking of, about... Yeah, we've done a lot of online material initially whenever, whenever the first lockdown, so a lot of um, sessions via Zoom and recording skill sessions and multi-sport sessions. So people were working on stuff like out in their gardens? And yeah, that's what I was doing. I was out in the garden delivering sessions and then talking to the camera and clipping it myself and then sending it back into work and then it was made um, available for people to Sort to of watch. like Joe Wicks. Not quite Joe Wicks. <laughs> <laughs> but just different things. And, yeah. um, so we're still using Zoom on one of our methods. Um, a programme fit for you, so that's like learning disabilities and physical disability participants through the Southern Trust and at the moment, the delivery there is still done via Zoom, so it's um, it's chair-based exercises that they can do from day centres or from home, and it causes some technical issues when internet drops down or <laughs> sound. I can imagine, yeah. But it's something different, and it just means that people are still being engaged, they're moving and they're participating, um, and obviously they're still getting their social um, outcomes. And involved. do you find that a lot of older people are interested in stuff in, 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 in that as- aspect of things? Programs like that that are done via Zoom, um, you know, for people who aren't comfortable leaving their house now, do you find? I would say some people have nearly have had to do it. Whenever everything was totally locked down, there was no other option. Yeah. Some people have adapted to it. I still think, face for me, face-to-face delivery is still um, the most important yeah. because you then have the social interaction and there's, there's more relationship building from a face-to-face delivery as opposed to behind a, a screen. Yeah. It's just not quite the same, um, but I know it has been very beneficial. So yeah, so w- tell us a bit about some of the um, programmes that you do. So currently we have a, a girls football, girls soccer programme that's going to be running um, here at South Lakes Leisure Centre. And that's is that a, age, age, what age group so is that? So that's going to be um, P4 to P7, so P4, 5, 6, 7, so you're talking really 7 to 11. Yeah. Um, depending on you know, what age you are in terms of the birthday, but P4, P5, P6, P7, and that's going to be a mixture of fundamental movements and uh, you know, passing, receiving, turning, shooting, dribbling. Basically, I'm looking at it to be a first step in the ladder, so if there's girls out there that have been watching the World Cup and the women's game that's been highly profiled and are thinking that maybe like to try it but they don't want to commit yet to a club this would be a perfect opportunity for those girls to, to participate in the game and just come in at an entry point Can they can they access this through their schools or do they have to go through the It's through the council through here the, so we would go the, the Get Active ABC yeah. website um, But would there be any involvement with the schools at all? Like would they be you know would you have flyers and stuff like that or we have an e- e- e-flyer, um, yes, and that will go into the schools. And I've also sent uh, some of that information out to the local clubs yeah. because there's also girls at clubs that might want to come for additional contact time, so just a little bit extra training. So that's an option for, for girls already there. Um, so the programme basically is like six-week blocks, and it's just f- participation, a bit of fun, um, developing and improving their skills. Um with a ball and, yeah. and obviously at the minute we're in winter time so it's it's indoor as well and with it being this this venue here at South Lakes indoor we'll, we'll be able to introduce the futsal element to it so it's like the Portuguese style uh, it's a different ball it's a ball that has no bounce right so it stays on the ground and basically it's to help improve um, it's a bit more weighted so it actually helps improve Dribbling pack, skills. Dribbling and, and, yeah. and 1v1, uh, little feints and moves. Um, so there'll be a little mix of futsal and football and a little bit of fundamental movements just to keep it fun and to develop those agility balance coordination. Yeah. Um, in terms of the other one, the other football 
which is a different type of football, is the walking football. Yeah, tell me about this, the so, walking football. I first seen it in England. I looked this up in England. Yeah, I saw, I was looking it up. Um, I saw a, a video of it and it tends to be for, you know, older people. Um, it looks, it's really interesting concept. Yeah, well, I seen it in England when I was there and it, it's been a slow burner here to take Yeah, off. I've never heard of it. There's some people who have done it before, but I think some people's perception is it because it's walking football, it's going to be too slow and you wouldn't really get a workout out of it, maybe, because they've never done it. So um, it is football in, in its instance. So you can play it four versus four, five v five, six v six, seven v seven, whatever numbers you have. The only real rule is you can't run. So if you run, it's a free kick. Um, the ball, that must be very hard. <laughs> But it then is, again, I suppose it is it is aimed at, at older people, really, isn't it? It is, but funny, uh, on the session that we have run currently in Banbridge, um, the age range would be from mid-30s up to late-60s. Okay. Um, the, the, the beauty of, of it being walking, it levels out. It doesn't really matter how fit you are because you can't run. You could be the quickest player on the pitch, but you can't use that. That's stripped away from you, so it makes it a level playing field. Equally, you might have someone that played football um, in their 20s and maybe finished playing in 30s because of either work or injury, injury yeah. or just didn't have the time so most people that have played football they never miss kicking a ball the feel of a ball at your feet Yeah. so it gives you a little bit of that and some of the guys that have been attending have had pedometers on them and they've been maybe hitting 10,000 steps in a really? session yeah. do Depend you have a lot of numbers do you get do you, have you found a lot of interest there's been some good interest in it. Um, we recently, on the Get Moving ABC site, um, were able to do like a little promo video of um, the sessions before Christmas and a few interviews with a few of the participants about how they found it, did they find it beneficial, and had they ever played it before. So most people that have been on the programme have never played it. And most people then, after the first session, were like, this is, this is good. Um, so it's starting to get... And it's social. Social, so that... The, there's plenty of um, plenty of laughs, banter, banter, <laughs> uh, and everybody's competitive. You know, the, people say, "Oh, I'm not that competitive," but as soon as it starts, people get competitive because it's a game, and obviously, there's do you have goalkeepers and stuff? Yeah, you can either have um, if you don't have two people that are Pacific goalkeepers, you can either do a, f a few different rules. You can either have closest player to the goal does nets or you can just have um, everybody takes a turn, number your players. If you have five players in your team, number them one to five, and everybody takes a turn. Okay. Um, it's been very good in terms of improving fitness. A lot of people then that are going to the program don't know each other, so you're that friendship end of it. You're developing the social end of it, you're getting active. Um, and even people are maybe getting, you know, some people might not want to go and do running. Some people might not want to go to the gym. Some people might not want to do a circuit class but football might be something they're really interested in but they think they're not fit to do it but they can with this and it's been good fun so we're hoping to you know grow the one in Banbridge and then um, again I would like to try and develop a, a walk on football here at South Lakes um, which will be indoor yeah so I'm quite confident that we'll, it'll yeah. be successful and obviously as the weather improves, you know, it, it'll pick up as well. Yeah, because that would be outside then. Yeah. Yeah. And what about, what What else? You do the Catch to... The Catch um, to 5K, so that's a programme that um, is really, as it says, you're trying to get from the couch to, to to eventually finish with a 5K run. So it's a eight-week programme. Um, it's two coach sessions by a coach, so myself, um, a week, and then the third session... The participants would do themselves so in theory it might be Tuesday with me Wednesday is the rest day Thursday with me Friday is the rest day and then on the Saturday or the Sunday they do their third run and um, it builds over the weeks so you and it really works this is a program that's been going for quite a while now um, yeah know. it's been very successful and again you don't have to be like fit or super fit to do this because it's building blocks yeah you know and um, for an example, your first week, you're only maybe running up for about a minute, and then you're walking for a few minutes, and you're repeating it about six times, and then you add in your warm-up and your, and your, your cool-down. Um, 
So the intensity will probably get a wee bit more as they get to like week four or five, it'll start to get a bit tougher. But the first number of weeks, it's just building it nice and slowly. And the good thing is, you know, when they're doing the run for the minute, that doesn't mean you're running maximum as long as you're moving. Yeah. You know, you can run as slow as you like. And then on the walk, that's more your recovery. And you can walk as slow as you like. And again, from social element, it's good fun. There's a lot of chit chat. There's people meeting people. Some people know each other. Some people have maybe, you know, um, said, "Oh, you, if you go, I'll go." Put pressure on their friend oh, to yeah, go with yeah, them. Yeah. And then at the end of the eight week or the, the eight weeks, in the challenge then is to complete the five k. Right. And do you find a lot of people that do this stick with it? Yeah, some people would eventually ask them, "What about?" running clubs you know so there's always an exit route you know with or even just keep it up themselves yeah so some people um, some people are quite comfortable being independent and running their own others prefer to run with people yeah so that's where the Couch to 5k probably is good initially to get interest and get people involved and then from that they might continue it on maybe download the app and continue to do it themselves or they might like to go to a club or go and do the, like a fun run in Lurgan Park on Saturday mornings um, where they can do that. Yeah, these park run things, yeah. Yeah, and you have the lakes here, you know, the whole two lakes is 5k. Yeah. So oh, so that's a good so they can do that. gauge. Yeah, you can just... And it's all flat, up. you know, it's flat ground. So. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? There's a big difference between running uphill and running flat. So that's, you know, especially if they're a beginner and starting, um, flat ground's going to be more beneficial than adding hills and then once you've done it and you're building your levels up if you've completed the couch to 5k and you want to change it then you can challenge yourself and you know, use different gradients with little hills and little rises and that'll challenge you more yeah um, but it's been it's been useful yeah was there anything any, anything else the strength and balance program is a, oh yeah this yeah this is a a program for people Probably more maybe 60s plus so you might have people that have had hip replacements that have maybe had falls some people may have had um, different underlying health conditions maybe uh, visual problems that have maybe led to trips and falls and stuff like that and um, the program is sort of a partnership with the Southern Health and Social Care Trust and um, Participants that come have been referred, so they would have be, went through a referral program with a physio, and then they would refer those people on to us at the council. And it's a program that targets exercise to target improving strength. So it's all chair based. So we would do a warm up with them, and then there'd be exercises that would target the ankles, the legs, the eyes, all different body parts that would enable improvement in balance. Yeah, and strength and it's been, it's been very beneficial. Um, the age range again has been up to, I think one of the oldest I've worked was 80, 86, 87 right. in the program, and it's about a like forty five minutes session. Um, and then but it's always good to keep everything moving, isn't it? You know, you need to keep your muscles moving. Yeah, and I find that even with the the lockdown and stuff, that the people that have returned back to the classes, you know, they have really when you when you picked up the phone to ring them to tell them it's back on, they've been excited to go because. For some people, that's maybe been their only means of getting out of the house and doing exercise. And also, again, because some of them have been coming for a while, um, there's friendships there. Yeah. And and they enjoy it. And you try to have a bit of fun with them as well. So it's not all serious. It's They're working and you play music. And you know, I pick a song list that that's from the 60s and 70s era. You know, yeah. the 60s, 70s, 80s music. So... It's all songs that they like, and you just encourage them, and they all sort of bounce off each other. Yeah, which has been good. So that's a that's a referral class, and then we also have the strength and balance, the community class. So traditionally, people that have come on our referral are there for eight weeks, and then at the end of the eight weeks is what they do next. So we then offer them from the council ourselves in the leisure centres the uh, community class, which like pay as you go. So if they want to continue to do the program, they can continue it. Um, they all get a wee booklet with all the exercises, so they're encouraged to do that at home anyway. Yeah. But like anybody with exercise, um, some people would say, if I'm left in my own device, I'll talk about doing it, but I'll not do it. Yeah. But if I actually come to the venue with others, 
it sort of motivates them to do it. Um, and quite a few people, you know, they've made, you can see good differences in them. And equally, when we had that first period of lockdown and people returned, you could see a difference of going backwards a little bit. Yeah. So you can see that it does affect them um, when they're in certain age bands. I actually had one woman um, who hadn't wore high heels in like 10, 12 years. So with the ankle strengthener exercise, she felt it was improving her. And some of the heel to toe walking exercises and she ended up going to a wedding back in the summer and wore high heels for the first time in 12 years. Wow. So she, that was her goal then, her motivation. You know, she was yeah. like, well, this is, this is helping me, so I'm going to stick at it. And my goal is going to be to put up her high heels oh, yeah. for a wedding. And she did it. So and she was in, I think she was about seven in her 70s. So yeah. she should always said she would have been wearing flats. Yeah. So I suppose like everything, do it. Just um, keeping active is really important and doing consistency trying to keep it you know if, if you're exercising once a week that, that you keep that consistency because you get all the, the feel good returns as well as the social you know once you do exercise you feel good you feel better you might not feel better going to it you might be thinking oh I don't want to go here but once you're there and you do it you start there's that um, that chemical yeah the, uh, the endorphins yeah yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, okay Aaron well that's great um, Thanks very much for, for chatting with me. And for any of those programmes, the likes of the Girls Football, Walking Football, Coach to 5K, it's the Get Active ABC um, website. Yeah. You'll find all the information and my details will be on there if people want to contact me about any of those. Okay, brilliant. Right. Thanks for Okay, there. thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed um, listening to Alex and Aaron there telling us all about the great programs that are uh, available um, for people from all ages. So I hope um, that this encourages people to sign up and get out and um, get involved in, in one of the activities. Remember to keep getting all of your news from Arma I and I hope you join us next time for our podcast. From the I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just two pounds a ticket. No purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see McKinneyCompetitions.com.